gentle breezes and clear weather. PM. Stood into the bay and anchored on the northeast side before the entrance of a small river. In ten fathoms, a fine sandy bottom. The northeast point of the bay bore east by south, half south, and the southwest point south, distance from the shore half a league. After this, I went ashore with a party of men in the boat and yawl, accompanied by Mr. Banks and Dr. Salander. We landed abreast of the ship and on the east side of the river just mentioned, but seeing some of the natives on the other side of the river, of whom I was desirous of speaking with, and finding that we could not ford the river, I ordered the yawl in to carry us over, and the boat to lay off at the entrance. In the meantime, the Indians made off. However, we went as far as their huts, which lay about two or three hundred yards from the waterside, leaving four boys to take care of the yawl, which we had no sooner left than four men came out of the woods on the other side of the river, and would certainly have cut her off had not the people in the boat discovered them and called to her to drop down the stream, which they did, being closely pursued by the Indians. The coxswain of the boat, who had the charge of the boats, seeing this, fired two muskets over their heads. The first made them stop and look round, but the second they took no notice of, upon which a third was fired, and killed one of them upon the spot, just as he was going to dart his spear at the boat. At this, the other three stood motionless for a minute or two, seemingly quite surprised, wondering, no doubt, what it was that had thus killed their comrade. But as soon as they recovered themselves, they made off, dragging the dead body a little way, and then left it. Upon our hearing the report of the muskets, we immediately repaired to the boats, and after viewing the dead body, we returned on board. In the morning, seeing a number of the natives at the same place where we saw them last night, I went on shore with the boats manned and armed, and landed on the opposite side of the river. Mr. Banks, Dr. Salander, and myself only landed at first, who went to the side of the river, the natives being got together on the opposite side. We called to them in the George's Island language, but they answered us by flourishing their weapons over their heads and dancing as we supposed, the war dance. Upon this we retired until the marines were landed, which I ordered to be drawn up about 200 yards behind us. We went again to the riverside, having Tupia, Mr. Green and Dr. Monkhouse along with us. Tupia spoke to them in his own language, and it was an agreeable surprise to us to find that they perfectly understood him. After some little conversation had passed, one of them swam over to us, and, after him, twenty or thirty more. These last brought their arms, which the first man did not. We made them every one presents, but this did not satisfy them. They wanted everything that we had about us, particularly our arms, and made several attempts to snatch them out of our hands. Tupia told us several times, as soon as they came over, to take care of ourselves, for they were not our friends. And this we very soon found, for one of them snatched Mr. Green's hanger from him and would not give it up. This encouraged the rest to be more insolent, and seeing others coming over to join them, I ordered the man who had taken the hanger to be fired at, which was accordingly done, and wounded in such a manner that he died soon after. Upon the first fire, which was only two muskets, the others retired to a rock which lay nearly in the middle of the river, but on seeing the man fall they returned, probably to carry him off for his arms, the last of which they accomplished, and this we could not prevent unless we had run our bayonets into them, for upon their returning to the rock we had discharged off our pieces which were loaded with small shot and wounded three more, but these got over the river and were carried off by the others who now thought proper to retire. Finding nothing was to be done with the people on this side, and the water in the river being salt, I embarked with an intent to row round the head of the bay in search of some fresh water, and if possible to surprise some of the natives and to take them on board, and by 
good treatment and presence, endeavor to gain their friendship with this view. Tuesday the 10th, p.m. I rode round the head of the bay, but could find no place to land on account of the great surf which beat everywhere upon the shore. Seeing two boats, or canoes, coming in from the sea, I rode to one of them in order to seize upon the people, and came so near before they took notice of us that Tupia called to them to come alongside and we would not hurt them. But, instead of doing this, they endeavoured to get away, upon which I ordered a musket to be fired over their heads, thinking this would either make them surrender or jump overboard. But here, I was mistaken, for they immediately took to their arms, or whatever they had in the boat, and began to attack us. This obliged us to fire upon them, and, unfortunately, either two or three were killed, and one wounded, and three jumped overboard. These last we took up and brought on board, where they were clothed and treated with all imaginable kindness, and to the surprise of everybody, at once became as cheerful and as merry as if they had been with their own friends. They were all three young, the eldest not above twenty years of age, and the youngest about uh, ten or twelve. I am aware that most humane men who have not experienced things of this nature will censure my conduct in firing upon the people in their boat, nor do I myself think that the reason I had for seizing upon her will at all justify me, and had I thought that they would have made the least resistance, I would not have come near them. But, as they did, I was not to stand still and suffer either myself or those that were there with me to be knocked on the head. 